Okay, hello everyone. So here we are in the amazing studios of the Photography Academy. Uh, I'm joined with Mark Cleghorn here today. Um, we've been doing some work for Mark's groups uh, previously, and we've got some more going on the, uh, their YouTube channel afterwards. But I thought it would be great if we had this set up and we've got the products down here, if we have a little chat with you guys. So we've got brought some of the core products down. So what we would like to do is basically, if you've got any questions at all that you need to find out with any of the product range, I'm here to answer these questions, but it's a great opportunity to talk to Mark about what the Experience Group can offer for you guys, because we've teamed up with them as a trade partner. And I really think that a lot of what the Experience Group can bring uh, to a studio will be a massive benefit for a lot of you. So first of all, hello Mark, thanks for inviting us down here. It's a well, great turn that you got. Can I just say your images look great on my wall? <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to all your photographers yeah, yeah. Uh, who use you and things really. Absolutely great product range that you've got and everything else. Welcome to the home of the Photographer Academy. Thank you very uh, much. Yeah. And obviously Mark Kevin and the Experience Group yep. as well as we do. Um, so it's great that you've been able to travel down, even with our distancing. We've got the social distancing in place. Um, <laughs> I think and you trimmed your moustache since I last saw you. It's, anyway, it's yeah. COVID secure, so you basically can't get as much COVID hanging onto the moustache. That's that's subconsciously the thinking. But uh, no, it was a, luckily an easy journey down because obviously the roads are clear. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's great to be in sunny Barry. It's yeah. uh, it's actually a lovely day here. Um, so for those of you who are watching in UK and you're familiar with Gavin and Stace, Stace in fact, this is Gavin and Stacey. This Hill. is the home, is it? So if you look from their house when they're kind of fil uh, the filming, you see my studios in the background. Well, Emma from our uh, lab was very excited about that. I think she was late at the party. I don't think she started watching Gavin and Stacey until lockdown one. So she was over the moon to find out that we've... Uh, got a new trade partner down in Barry, so I'm, I'm sure you'll see her down here uh, one day soon as well. Good excuse to come anyway, kind of Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you need to know from me? Because I want to talk to you about your products and kind of how they're used anyway. Yeah, so but what I, I think from your point of view, I'd like just basically explain a little bit about what the experience group is, what you guys do for photographers and how you can kind of progress their studios on. Okay, so the experience group now is in its sixth year. Uh, it's designed predominantly at portrait photographers. Yep within the UK and Ireland and now becoming around the world, which is really cool. We're really more of a marketing, business development company mm -hmm. than anything else. Um, I kind of call myself a prostitute. Yeah, okay, right? fine. Uh, and the We've all got a cross to bear, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in my heart, and ever since I left school, I've been a photographer. Yeah. But I'm as much a businessman as I am a photographer, and I'd like to say that I can take a decent snap. Right. But I've always believed that you're only as good as your last shot. Uh, and so if you, have, if you haven't taken photographs in the past few weeks, then you're not very good. Uh, and uh, um, anyway, but as far as the experience group is concerned, it's really, I've always had this kind of mission to ensure that photographers don't think of themselves, mm -hmm. whether they're one man band, one woman band, or they're running a team, that they don't think of them themselves as small and they don't think of themselves as they should be selling their product at a kind of a lesser price than somebody else. It's very hard being a creative because people want you to go, oh, that's really nice. Oh, I love your photograph. And you want to put your arm, arms around, around you. And there's a thousand pounds per photograph. But the reality is the world isn't like that. Yep. You know, and, and you know that and I know that. The reality is I've got to build up a business. I've got to build up the business brand and core. I've got to make sure that the photographers um, are going at their right pace to what they need to achieve, whether that's short term or long term, and to ensure as well they, they can sell their work without having to sell their work. We, we don't deal with any kind of heavy selling or whatever it is, but you know, we are looking at inspiring images here, and yeah. none of them are us. So that's bad news for me, and why aren't all these photographers under the experience umbrella? But people buy from people, mm -hmm. and I hope that's what we teach them within the experience group as well is that not only do they have to be a good photographer and have the right price list and the right products and everything else with it, but they, they also need to have really excellent uh, customer service, service with it. And that's why we're called the experience. Absolutely. It's because we're trying to say it's not about the photography. Um, otherwise, we'd be called our, our uh, kind of online training brand name, Photo Training for You, or now called the Photographer Academy. But really, in professional portrait photography, it's really about the experience with it. So, so that's basically us. We're, yeah. we're professional photographers developing professional photographers to be better professional photographers so they can earn whatever kind of living that they achieve. So we're not a, fran a franchise. That's absolutely key. And I think I got bought a t-shirt last year by a few of them, but I say <laughs> that much. Um, but that's pretty much us, you know. Fantastic. Um, 
we need partners like you, uh, Digital Lab, so that we make sure our images stand out from the crowd. Uh, yes, a few of our experienced photographers, they use budget fra framing and because they're either at their beginning of their career or they're using it for promotion. Or, what's worse, they don't see the value in excellence, no. which is really heart-wrenching for me. Um, and I'm sure it's the same for you when you kind of see some great photographers who don't believe in themselves and they don't believe in their product. You, you do see it. I mean, you see some phenomenal photographers that just can't get over that, that hump. And I think you touched on it before about we are creatives. I mean, within the lab and stuff like that, you know, all of us are from either photographic or design backgrounds originally. And it is that kind of, you do get a personal almost hurt when someone doesn't buy into your vision, doesn't buy into your work. And that's why I think a lot of photographers find rejection hard in that sense because it isn't something that you, you're knocking up in a factory and sending out to somebody. This is something that is your craft and your passion that you're presenting to them as a commodity, but they still have to love it as well as buy it from you kind of thing. So when people don't take that step and buy a beautiful piece of wall art or prints or a presentation product, it, it, it's, it's a bit of a personal insult as well. And I think being able to train people in how you can completely alleviate that stress side because like you say, a heavy sell doesn't work in this industry at all. Talking to people like humans works in this industry because they, you know, their end client respond to that. And it's just trying to get that in every sort of step of the process from your first consultation, your first contact with the customer all the way through. Exactly. So the sales process isn't a big um, ambush kind of thing. And, and just because you're a great photographer, mm. in, even if you're in your own lunchtime, um, uh, and, and I've taken a great photograph of my own lunchtime, as it were. <laughs> um, but e even if you think you're a great photographer, it doesn't mean they're going to sell. Yeah. You know, and, and everything that you just said is about what the experience is about. It's all right from the beginning right through to the end of the visit. And it's essential to understand and accept that. Sure. I, I basically uh, prepare photographers for rejection of 20% of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which sounds weird. It's kind of, and why I say, Accept the 20% and move on is because too many worry about the 20%. Yeah. It's in fact the 80% of the time, the 80% of the clients who really value everything that we do, the 80% of the clients who really want to spend excellent money with us. And out of that 80%, there's kind of going to be a 5% at the top that spends stupid. You know, and that's what the kind of the, gold, uh, the golden client, we don't build a business on them. We build a business on the 75% in, in there, yeah, as it yeah. were. Um, but there's so many photographers, and we've seen them all. I'm sure, you know, you've been around this game as long as I have. Well, not quite as long as I have, because I'm a dinosaur. Um, but you've got to really, don't devalue yourself. No. That, that's, num that's number one. I think photographers, when they kind of just go, oh, I'm a, a digital sales photographer, that's basically what I do. I, I hate the expression, uh, shoot and burn, mm -hmm. um, because there's nothing derogatory to selling digital files. In the same way, I hate the expression about weekend cowboys. I, I think that's really derogatory. I think many people forget that the real wedding photographers of the 60s were all weekend warriors. They were all the press photographers, the commercial photographers, trying to earn a little bit of extra money on the we weekend, etc. Um, but there's this kind of almost, I'm not sure if it's just a UK thing, mm -hmm. right? but it's almost, I just want to knock myself down. Nobody else is doing it, so I may as well be depressive on myself today. And, and I'm sure you kind of get it. Yep. The, the photographers who complain are the photographers who are not busy enough. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. So the people, I'm sure, that you get ringing up and go, where's, where's my frame? Or, oh, by the way, I've changed it in size now. Or whatever it will be, are those photographers too much time on their hands? And, and to some extent, that's what we've got to do, is make them so busy that they're concentrating on the, the bigger picture, the finer details, in other words, right at the beginning. Yeah. instead of right at the end of things, really. I'm not sure if that helps you about me and the experience. <laughs> no, I'm basically absolutely. a prostitute. And if, <laughs> so if you've got any questions for Mark the Prostitute, um, please feel free to pop them in the comments section or about any of the products that we've got here as well. Uh, we are, there is a slight delay on YouTube, so if you get them in early enough, then we should have time to go through them at the end of this. Um, but in terms of the product range, I know you had a number of different questions about what we do as part of Digital Lab, and I know a lot of our customers are already au fait with a lot of the products. But I'm, I'm wondering if there's some, anything that you would like to sort of discuss in terms of what you, you think is the right type of product for photographers to be offering at the moment, or if there's something that you could maybe suggest that 
they could be targeting or, you, or doing at the moment to try and drive those sales either ready for a mad dash come fingers crossed the sort of the 3rd of December or what they'd be doing now in this sort of period of inactivity. So the first thing I'll say, as far as restarting England is concerned, yeah, um, obviously because they've locked down the present, yeah, yeah. Um, you've got a problem because you're not going to be able to produce the product for me to deliver on Christmas Day. The yep. reality is that. So as far as if you're a photographer who doesn't want to change or dilute their brand or their core of product, you've just got to make sure that client knows that you're going to be delivering it post Christmas and, and you know, and, and we're going to kind of really yeah. make sure, okay, there's going to be certain products that you're going to be able to look at. And I would definitely, if I was a digital lab customer, I'd be ringing up going, Alex, hi mate, how's it going? Yeah, 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 okay. So this lockdown thing, yeah, I'm not going to be able to shoot until the 3rd of G uh, December. Um, is there any chance I can get certain products out by a date? Now, I'm sorry if I've just... No, no, all of, you, all of our cutoffs are on the you, website and on the yeah, Facebook uh, panel. So uh, and, and it's just that reality, isn't it? Yeah. And, and the thing is, if I'm a £65,000 a year spender with you, yep. you're going to go, what do you need, Mark? Yep. If I'm a £600 spender a year, uh, you're going to go, look, Mark, uh, uh, we've got to kind of really use the cutoff dates. Mm -hmm. I, it's not our fault. You're in lockdown. We'll deliver everything as soon as we can. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But when I'm a big spender, you go... This guy's going to be shipping through and, um, and so on. So as far as being realistic, if you're closed and you're going to restart, don't over-promise anything. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I would prom you know, say to you all. Don't over-promise because you'll just disappoint. So yep. don't promise the client anything they can't get in that week with it. Then as far as um, what I'd be looking at you now, and the good, the good news is you already know there's actually products on your wall that are almost exactly the same as products that I already sell. Yeah. So that's always a great transition when you start to move uh, providers. In other words, you know, uh, partners is, mm -hmm. is a key word, is because we are in this together. You need me to be busy. Yep, absolutely. That's number one. Yeah, yeah. And I need to be able to buy the product off you at the margin price that I make money and you make the money that you need to do. Exactly. It, it is a pure marriage, isn't it really, in, biz in business. Mm -hmm. But it's also a marriage with the client. And if I'm choosing products and I'm, say, at the beginning of my career with little experience, with little sales skills, and I don't even mean the heavy sales skills, I want about the sales skills, the, some of the problems that we can physically get is that we could have products on our wall that people can't afford to buy. Yeah. A, because we just haven't explained it right, or we've priced it so stupidly that we're never going to get anybody to do it. But it's always good to have ambition. We're guilty of that. All the labs are guilty of that as well. When you want to do some product development and we kind of can let ourselves sort of get ahead of ourselves a lot and you want the best paper possible. You want the very, you know, we could get gold leaf engraved frames in and stuff like that. But you, what you're doing is building yourself a product which looks phenomenal, but no one's going to buy it. No one's going to be able to afford it. You're going to have to sell it for like £3,000 to your client because we're going to have to charge close like £800, £900 to make it. So exactly the same process goes for the photographer. Sell stuff that you know you can get your margin for and that you can actually make a living from. And have the two different product ranges. Yeah. You know, I've, I've talked to you in the past, you know, I, I want my core range, which yeah. is actually for my core photography, that has to stand alone. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to have a, another line of products that are mar margin keen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in other words, they're cheaper <laughs> uh, than the other stuff. But yeah, yeah. the other stuff is going to have a higher margin return on me, and I'm going to sell less of them perhaps mm -hmm. at times. And so I need to actually choose a product that is easy to look. A £60 shirt, all right? And it's on me. I'm a fat guy. I'm a fat old guy. A £60 shirt doesn't make a difference. I could wear a £20 shirt, and it would be the same, uh, the same thing. That's not the same with a frame. No. Nope. That's the good news, is that... You can wrap a sow's ear <laughs> with something really good. And it starts to look like a little bit more like a silk purse. I mean, I can't help it, but I'm just looking behind you, did you, with the round kind of uh, yeah, um, yeah, acrylic, the, is it? Yeah, yeah, the, the acrylic spheres, yeah. I love it, yeah? And to be fair, you could put anything in that, and it's going to look pretty good. And it's different than the high street. Exactly. That's Offer, number one. Offering something that they can't readily get. And it's, we've seen it with canvas over the years and stuff like that. Cheaper alternatives that came along, and you can talk to your client until you're blue in the face. But at the end of the day, they're not going to be able to see that something's archival or it's a special chic printer or it's sealed or something like that. 
they're going to see you can get a forty pound version of that from Max Spielman or ASDA or any other you know other cheap canvas providers that are available. And it, it dilutes the offering, and it means that you can't sell that because you have to give them something that they a they either haven't seen before, or b they've seen they want. It's an aspirational product, but they can't get it. It has to come through the photographer. Yeah. Let me talk about the products that I yeah, yeah, kind of for. associate yeah, with you anyway, all right? Yep. So just because it's here, yep. fantastic photograph, by the way, whoever it is. Love it, love it, love it. Well done, whoever they are. Um, this one, for me, it does it. I know what you said before, and the vintage it's called. The vintage, yeah, yeah, well, standalone product. It is that for me as well, yeah. um, but it absolutely sits within the fine art. It fits in boudoir. Mm. So for me, that's where that product would remain. And with the genres of photography that you're doing, that basically is it and things right, yeah. right? So as far as that, I was fascinated, to be honest, and you have teased me a little bit today now, and it's a bit frustrating because I've got to look at it and go, ooh, okay, I yeah. like that now, and possibly this is a product for 2021. And I love when you talked about the Gifle varnish on here and the six layers. Yeah, so I mean, and, and you know, again, a lot of you will be aware of how we make the sort of fine art naturals, but I've, what I've noticed is a lot of our photographers are asking for behind the scenes photos now because it's something they can blog about and pitch to their customers. So that's something we can do, you know, as long as the time provides, we're more than happy to do so. But it's great for content because that's something that the customer can't get on the high street. That's not, it, it's something that sets it apart. So if you can explain to your customer why that's the price that you're charging, because look, it's exquisite, it's, it's handmade, look at the effort that goes into it and stuff like that. That's the difference, and that's what helps you make sales. And it's great content building for your blogs anyway. So that is definitely, I, I'm already selling something very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So again, I was talking about the transition at the beginning. For me to move from one supplier to another, yeah. it takes either a lot of planning. Um, obviously, you know, if you're a pennies man like I am, we look at every penny in the profit. We've got to make sure that it fits in how it affects the business, the business, the, oh, yeah, or, absolutely. Uh, the ordering pro process, mm -hmm. the flow, the the kind of finalization. So if I need it to be drop shipped to a client, I know you drop ship. So yep. these are all boxes that you tick when you're looking for a new trade pub man, in many ways. Yep. You've got to make sure that they, they fit your, your box as it were. Because you know, face it, I can go to Ikea and pick up a load of frames and I can get change of a hundred quid and I can turn that hundred quid into a thousand, thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah. But is it going to be there in two, three years' time? Is it not? And the one thing that I really build the brand on is that, at least in the Mark Hebel photography brand, is that memories are made to last a lifetime. Mm. And that means the frame was well. But so we call them like heirloom products, you know, that you want that on the wall for you 30 go. years. You want that kid to be embarrassed when she brings the, the first boyfriend home. You, know, like, yeah. like, no, 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 you can't do that anymore. Um, so that's great, okay? Yeah. So um, do you want to have, uh, yeah, we've got to kind of keep the yeah, fist yeah. and something. I'll take that for you a minute. Thank you. Um, the Faro you said it's called, isn't it? Yes. Okay, yeah. so this is pretty much identical to a product that we use today. And uh, again, it's one of my images, in fact, really. Um, so that's a first. I've never seen that <laughs> before. Love the double mount, love the variety. So I, I already know straight away this comes straight in. Yes. I can do it. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I don't need to change a sample on a wall. That's key. And there are, when you look at the different suppliers, there's going to be a difference in finish. Mm. That some suppliers will sell you the same mold, same molding without the craftsman finish. Mm -hmm. That becomes a negative, especially yep. on the corners and the edges. Absolutely, and and yeah. that's where it, it's the devil's in the detail again, isn't it? Kind of. So for me, that can sell every day of the week. And again, one of the things that I saw in Digital Lab about three years ago, I think it was now, when I first came across you, was you already have an ordering process on your lab for multiple wall art at the same time. The collections, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. now uh, in my experience group, that's everything I talk about, yeah. is multiple wall art. I'm never interested, with all due respect, in this. Right. This, this, this I, I love it for weddings and perhaps for the baby photography and everything else, but for me, it, it, it just kills one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of wall art, mm -hmm. and basically I've got one. So for me, I get the story and I, I, I get it, but, in the portrait world, it's cost me about two and a half grand. Yeah. So in other words, I've lost two and a half grand worth of sales because I've put them all in one. And this is this kind of thing. So even with this image, I'd much prefer to have a beautiful looking bride and groom, by the way, um, in the one image. And then I can go two, two, and I'd have to say, well, you'll have to buy the other one as another. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so straight away, I've got my quintuple, I've got my five, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's great with it. Yeah. Do you mind passing down your... Yeah, the, uh, uh, the I call it the Mexican, but it's not, it's the Fiesta, isn't it? It's not an old Ford either, yeah. yeah it's, no. it's one of those, things. so Fiesta, because it's a, it's a Fiesta of colours. Uh, yeah, well, you know you. what, um, and we use this as well. Um, I tend to use it in the more subdued colours, um, <laughs> to be fair, but I am a, a, a more, I'm a black, I'm not sure if you know, but I'm a black yes, and white yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even though I shoot some colour, that's where the prostitute comes into it again, is that really, um, I, you split me down the middle, mm. people used, I used to say I ran yellow, that wasn't because I was a coward, I don't think so anyway, but I was because I used to shoot Kodak, yep. and I was sponsored by Kodak and everything else, but it was exactly. But uh, I bet they don't even know who Kodak is. I was going to say, did you come across Callum in those days? Yeah, I think. Kodak yeah, was yeah, yeah, uh, Kodak, one of our yeah, reps, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and yes, anyway, Callum. There's some, if they there's know some brilliant photographs we'll have to get up on the VIP group, uh, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and there's great photographs of me in the dress <laughs> uh, at some stage, in, all over the place. Anyway, um, yeah, so again, it fits. Now, both of those fit in, mm. sorry to say, but into my budget framing. Yep. Now, there's nothing wrong in a photographer using these as part of their signature range. Absolutely, not. Absolutely nothing, not. And I'm not being derogatory on that. The reality is you've got to sell what the price is and what you feel you can get for it. That is key with it. I mean, what I love, though, about um, the uh, Fiesta and Mexican, I've got it in my head, sorry about that. Um, but the F uh, Fiesta in the color range? Yes. I don't think enough photographers think about selling into kids' bed bedrooms. No, absolutely not. They sell into the mums Perfect and dads for the room, yeah. and I don't even mean baby. I'm on about when the kids are growing up and everything else with it. They should think about playrooms, nurseries, everything. Exactly you know, that would be, and, and they're almost relieved that somebody's buying one. Yeah, and they forget about buying the many. Um, and this is this kind of thing that it can be color toned to the client, which is key, of course. Okay. And I mean, that's why it's great with programs like uh, ProSelect or Fundy or something, because, you know, if you've got room sets of different rooms, you can actually show to the customer exactly how that's going to look in a nursery or in a playroom or in a bathroom or, you know, and it, it just opens up more and more opportunities, like you say, to sell multiple wall arts um, because they might not think of it. You know, it's not a normal colour you would have in the home unless your decor is kind of a bit crazy and a bit out there. But with the right imagery, it works brilliantly. And, you know, 90% of all photographers will sell this frame in a black or a white. But the colour range is there where there isn't any other options. You know, it, it is, it's a brilliant offering. So for me, you know, red wall in a gallery. Yeah. Very hard to sell people mm. um, images if all my gallery walls were red. Yeah. Because it's not like their home. Yeah. So, you know, as you walk around here, majority of it is Mark Cagle white. <laughs> All right, because I'm a black and white photographer, yep. black frame, white mount, black and white image, sells any day of the week. Mm -hmm. And when you see it on a white wall, a grey wall, whatever it be, it naturally kind of lends itself. But even the one that you've got beautifully behind, uh, behind mm. you there, the black and white image, yep. it doesn't quite have the effect. So when we're kind of laying out stu uh, studio walls and gallery walls, even in the viewing room, we've got to make sure that we make the client feel at home with it. Okay. So uh, I'm, I, I love colour, um, but oh my God, I don't want it in my house. Yeah, I don't mind grey or black wall, yeah, yeah. Or very dark grey wall and things really. Uh, so m my study is painted light grey. And the reason being is because I picked light grey up instead of white and I bought a hundred litres. It's getting done, it's getting <laughs> it done. It yeah, was exactly yeah. that with it. And so um, I love the Fiesta range, but it is a part of our budget range and I think that if you're a lifestyle photographer, a contemporary photographer, or a photographer that uses colour day-to-day in studio, especially seam seamless paper and everything else. Absolutely. Yeah. Fiesta as well, if you're speaking yeah. of it, things right. Should we get rid of that? Yeah, paper? yeah, let's go for it. Um, so the other one is your black and white one there, if you don't mind, which is the girl. Yeah. Um, that pretty much is very close to my core. And in fact, the frame is almost identical again to one that we're already doing, if it's not already the same, in fact. Um, Do you get the signatures on the, yeah, the mounts? Yeah. yeah. So um, by, by design, I try and get it done in the lab. Yep. Otherwise, we have to print ourselves. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Words, if, the, if the lab can't apply it in a digital way, then basically, instantly, for my signature range, they says it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, it cannot be done. I also sign the back with a certificate. Okay. 
So there's a certificate of authentication, um, and it's not because I'm a big Eddie Git or anything. It's like just that. added it's value. It, exactly that. Yeah. It's all about perception and so on with it. Yeah. All, all our stuff comes with a promise of ec excellence. So when we start to talk with new trade supply, we have to make sure there's a promise of excellence between the two of us. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and you have to sign up to that with us, like you have in yeah, the exper yeah. experience group, but also on a one to one level. I need to know that you love your product as much as I love your product, and that if there's something wrong with that product, then we're going to fix it. Absolutely. And, and it's not our problem at times. No, no. The client has stuck it in a sunny room, you know, and 18 months later they've brought it along with you, and you've gone, oh, it's faded. Yeah. And you go, where was it? And you kind of, oh, did you check? you know, on the back to do this thing. So we offer these care card things. I okay. don't know if you've seen these. So no, with, with every type of product, basically, well, there's a care card and the right kind of, like, a, a microfiber cloth or something like that in there. Because we've had the horror stories. We've had the horror stories from people's clients, like, oh, I tried to climb, uh, clean my canvas with Jif or something like that, you know, and it's rubbed it off. Great. So it's just, a, it's a no-brainer. It stops so much hassle from our end because at the end of the day, if a photographer's client damages something, they are going to go back to the photographer and say, it arrived like this. And there's nothing you can say about it. And we've, had, we've seen it, you know, multiple, multiple times. So, and you've got to swallow your pride and go, right, it's not your problem. It shouldn't be our problem either, but this isn't going to go away. But together, it's our problem. Yeah. Um, and it's how we, you know, if, if we're, uh, if I'm only spending 600 quid a year with you, mm. I get it. If I'm spending six, 60,000 pound a year with you, it's kind of, you know, it's all about being realistic. Isn't yeah. it really? And and partnership is essential for us to really make sure that we're on the same kind of page. Yeah. I don't need hassle, you don't need hassle. And I need it kind of we order in and the product is out. Mm -hmm. And I need to know that when it's being white label shipped to my clients, especially in these times, yep. it has to be really, you know, uh, kind of white shipped to them. I need to know on your end that somebody is looking at it with the same love that we look at. Yeah. And I know that because obviously we talk it through and everything else. And for those of you who don't use people in that way, you should really talk through because we're not conveyor belt. Nope. We're on about trying to sell a, I hate the word pieces of art. You know, at four o'clock this morning on television, I'm one of those guys that doesn't sleep, but I'm watching portrait of, you know, artist of the week. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. It's nothing to do with photography <laughs> and I can't paint for the love of me now, even though that's what I wanted to do. But, I don't but similar concepts, you know, you're talking yeah, about composition, you're talking about lighting, see, you know. I, you're talking I'm a photographer, yeah. and I've had loads of these discussions in forums and everything else with it, but I'm a photographer, I'm not trying to be an artist. But I understand those who want that lovely mm. little brand, I get it. Um, but for me, I love to take pictures of people. That's it. Mm -hmm. I need to know that as a photographer, I've done my job. If this is the last photograph, somebody ever has done yes i've done my job yeah and unfortunately for me i've had a lot of clients go through me that they haven't been able to in one way or another have another photograph done you know it happens um but it's it, it is you've got to really love it and if experience going back to that word again is that i've got to make sure that it's a good experience for them it's a good experience for me because right. if you don't love it it's work absolutely you know, and I'm sure it's the same for you guys. You're not a sausage factory, are you? <laughs> I'm a bit <laughs> so I know all about that, you know? Uh, but it, it's all about here. So when I kind of really look at a product that is going to act as a, a signature product, mm. something that we have pride, pride in, something that we want to sell forever, I need to know it's available forever. Definitely. You yeah. know, I think one of the mistakes that so many suppliers have done over the years, they bring something in, give it a test. They buy it to buy a sample. By the time you get a, re a reordering of it, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, these things. So I, I usually use this as we're seeing it, or very, very similar, or it's with a spacer. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's yeah, something yeah. that we discussed before. Yeah, so the MoMA product, you can get it with or with it. So that one's up against the rebate as a traditional frame print, but you can get the matching spacer as well. And that opens up loads more mountain opportunities because because we create everything and caramel killers for this actually because we always butt heads about the level of personalization because you've got to be able to offer something that you know it isn't just a, a store bought product and stuff like that. We can tweak things. We can um, 
personalized it to an extent for the photographer because it's still very much a lab and a workshop. Um, the guys there are making every single frame from scratch anyway for that product, for your client's product. It's not a ready-made frame with a ready-cut mount and it's just pieced together on a conveyor belt sort of thing. So I think that matters. And I think having the relationship with the lab team, with the guys in the framing and stuff like that, so they know exactly what you're wanting, does matter. And especially in today's market where you have to be entirely sure that it's the right thing to go through because a lot of people are drop shipping, a lot of people are because we just don't have that contact anymore. You can't nip round to your clients and drop off the product because it's it's invasive at the moment, you know. And do you know the nice thing about this shipping though direct to the client? Mm. And I'm not sure if everybody's doing it as far as photographers, asking the client to photograph it on their wall and send me a photograph. Oh it's fantastic. Some people yeah, yeah. say they do. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh yeah, I always ask a client to do that. Rubbish percentages are this small compared to the amount of the kind of time they ask and yeah, they get yeah. it done. But this is a great way for us to see our memories. I mean, loads of, loads of people are happy to still come in and pick up the work and stuff like that. And that's fine. But having the opportunity to give that client the choice, it means that they're not put in any kind of awkward situation. Uh, with one of our students at present, they always go and ha hang the image yeah, in yeah. the client's home yeah, for yeah. them. And I went, well, your stuff then. <laughs> <laughs> and he did say, well, yeah, we need a yeah, different type yeah, of service yeah. in 21. Uh, but the reality is. So um, I've kind of just gone, I featured there four products. That is absolutely. No, that, that's fantastic. I mean, I don't know if we've got any questions came, come through yet at all, Jay, if uh, anything's on there now. Well, Alex, I think they're going to take the advantage of having Mark give you ideas yeah, yeah. on this. So they're a little bit more business. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Products, I mean, but they're related to products. So one of the things that came in on the chat panel, um, hopefully you can hear me okay, but mark away, constant on you while I uh, make questions, is we're seeing obviously your product range, mm. but from a photography point of view, would I have one of everything, um, or would I really sort of fine tune our products that are available to clients? So to summarize the question, it was kind of, uh, do I have one of ev everything on display yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. as a steward, a steward view, or do I kind of cherry pick, cherry pick? Absolutely. Uh, well, no, no, we always advise that you as well. You do it as well, isn't it? You know, um, you're not going to sell everything if you bamboozle your customer. Uh, you're just going to confuse yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. You know, at the end, when I retired, I'm not sure if you know, but I t retired in 2001. I had seven okay. years off. Yeah. And I've never been so bored in my life. <laughs> all right. And I've always told everybody since, I'm going to die uh, in business, yeah. as it were. Anyway, fingers crossed it's not tomorrow. <laughs> anyway. um, but yeah, um, Debbie proved the point, in fact. Um, so we'd uh, sold our business, our poor, our poor trade bi uh, business and commercial business. And we built a studio in the grounds of the home. Mm -hmm. uh, we had two and a half acres of wooded ground. It sounds idyllic, thatched roof, seven Lovely. bedrooms, built a uh, uh, 11 meters by 11 meter stu studio. It was absolutely idyllic. And when I said to Debbie, so, because um, we were still shooting about three clients a week, about 35 weddings a year. Yeah. And that was retired in comparison. Anyway, um, I said, so what, so what do you want to put the viewing room? She said, um, oh, let's just go for that. I said, what else? She went, no, let's just keep it as that. And, and you can't even buy this mold in today, which is a real shame. So we technically, we even had our projection screen mm, wrapped much. in it. Oh, okay. The same thing, all right? So we had three uh, 30 by 30s along the kind of the sideboard side, as we call, what yeah. we call it. And then we had a 40, 30 on the fire breast. I can still see it to this day, obviously you can tell. Yeah, yeah. We had a, uh, so behind the um, uh, Alcove Cove then, we had a 30 by 24, then we had a 20, 20, and then we had another 30 by 30 down in the corner. Nothing on the small kind of entrance into the studio area. And on the left hand side, we had just, we used to get very thin frame and basically have it in the different sizes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, anyway, we had them all in the same frame. Do you know what frame we sold for seven years? That frame. When Debbie was used to say, because we always call it a wrapping. Yeah. I'm selling photographs, I'm not selling a frame. Exactly. And so as far as we're concerned, all we're ever really looking at is actually, how is that for size? And if it's too big, or if it's too expensive, they go, what's the next size down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they just kind of come down and else with it. Um, and once we're there, it doesn't really matter what frame it's going to be in. It's after they've made the decision, that's what is then going to have the wrapping around it. So, yeah. sorry, Jay, I waffled on there. Um, I would have a maximum of four products, a maximum of four products. In fact, I've just shown you four products that are technically my four products. Which just answers my second question. 
<laughs> I think it's from the same person, but was, right, tell us what the type of products that you would have. Okay, so uh, to uh, summarise what Jay was on about, uh, it was what products would I have then? <laughs> um, it would be what I've just shown you. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. need a signature range, I need something special. Yep. So when we talked about the, what's this, Moam? Yeah, yeah, the Moam. Moam. Um, and, uh, the vintage, and vintage yeah. vintage straight away are basically signature yep. those are high-end products they look expensive they have expensive finish I can add a zero or at least something on the end exactly. to make it special yeah. especially when you start to talk about the gicle um, co uh, the coating on this already through my head when you talked about me this today I'm going that's a premium, premium product, oh, not just yeah, a yeah. premium signature product. So those, those, those two straight away, and you've already seen, in fact, just by pure coincidence, you, you sell a similar mold, yep. molding to what we do, uh, the uh, Fiesta and the Faro. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and those are basically it. So I hope that answers the question. But I'm going to be honest, they're both in black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the yellow and I love the grey, but I, I am a black man, as it were. I'll take it. Um, so obviously we're in strange times and we've talked about cut-off dates and things like that. Um, how do we get advice on how we maximise the time between now and Christmas for you? Yeah, so... Um, I was yeah, going to so say, sorry, just quickly, I mean, because our cut-offs for wall art and frame products is the 9th of December. Um, obviously that was planning on not a national lockdown for an entire month. Um, but there is... a a finite amount of time to basically maximise everything that you're doing when we when the English do go back um, on the second. Yeah, and I, I, you know, let's face it, most of the Christmas trade in a good business should not be done in December, not unless we're, re we're retail. It hasn't helped that different areas of the UK and the world have been locked down unexpectedly you know, we all expected lockdown too, but we thought it was going to be straight away after Christmas. Yeah, yeah. You're shut for a month or whatever it was going to be. So what you could concentrate on for now is, first of all, speak to your supplier, Digital Lab, and go, what can I get? Can I get print? Can I get print? If I can get print, what can I do with print? If I can get something that is framed, it might not be our signature range, but it might be more of your kind of studio range, like you're saying, the Moam and the Fiesta. So at least you've got something, but it all depends on you. Yep. Worst case scenario is deliver a small product for them framed, deliver the likes of a photograph that it could look like on a wall so they can hand it out to the client so they can at least pass it to their loved ones. I would definitely spend the likes of, even if it was, uh, I mean, is, is there a difference in production with the smaller frames, or is it all about the five to seven days? All about the same time, yeah. So if, if we couldn't get that, what can I get to put even a seven by five in it? I want them to be able to present it to the client actually on Monday. the day. It's something, in fact, I've been nagging my experience group for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also going to fit into your price range and so on. You don't want to devalue yourself at this type of, Chris, of Christmas. Does that answer the question for you, Jay, do you think? Yeah, no, I think so, yeah. Deliver something than nothing, without a doubt, and speak to your suppliers and see what you can get. Even if you said to me, look, you can have 20 inches, Yep. and by the way, you threw me under the bus today because I went, what do you mean 20 inches is 24 by 20? Because I've sold my life on glass size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now all of a sudden, I've got a more cost-effective product. <laughs> <laughs> I always use the word cheaper product. Yeah, yeah. Because of course, the equivalent of would be 24 by 20 that yeah, yeah. buying. So. Yeah. I would be selling 26, so that's what, 2420. Mm -hmm. uh, and we would actually be looking at the image in size, but I'd be selling, still selling this to the client as 24 inch. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, anyway, sorry, Jay, I diversify uh, I there. I think my last question is directed at Alex, but it's about, you touched on it already, you just said, but the question was, um, is the cutoff date applied to all of the product range? Yeah, so the, the cutoff date of the 9th is the, um, well, it's all the fine art frame stuff. It's the, wall art and our frame range. 
we may be able to push that a day or two. We, uh, luckily, just before um, October, we hired three new guys in the actual production side of things as well. Um, all experienced framers and mounters and laminators, which has been a massive help. And in terms of the, the amount of work that we're getting out there, we're putting extra shifts on and everything like that. So that is working very well. Like yourselves, we don't want to over-promise and under-deliver. Um, so it will be the ninth, 10th for those frame products. Uh, mounted prints and print only will be later, but all of the cutoff dates are on the website and on the Facebook group as well. The, the, the good news really in some ways, but it is almost a false date, is that mm. because Christmas is on a Friday, Oh, you've got. It, I mean, it yeah. almost feels like we've got a whole week, but the reality is we haven't, because really, nah. if it doesn't leave you by the Tuesday, there's no guarantee it's going to get there by the Wednesday or the Thursday, because all the whole world at present is being delivered by either Amazon, D, yes. or DPD, or the post office, or all your equivalent. Yeah. And they're all under that strain at that time of year, isn't it? You know, so. I yeah. mean, we were talking about before. That's why we put normally the the turnaround times on the frames were seven working days. We've moved that to seven to ten working days because. The, the normal next day delivery service that we've all become accustomed to, and this is across the board, has been delayed. And, and, and DPD, Parcel Force, UPS, Hermes, whoever, um, they've all contacted all the labs and everything because you know we do talk amongst each other. And they have w warned us that there will be delays with the normal next day service because of the sheer bulk the entire world is ordering online at the moment because they can't get to the shops. So it's just that leaving that little bit of extra time to get the orders in. The, the one thing I say from the photographer point of view, I wouldn't allow the client to pick up. I would go and deliver. I would, yeah. We usually, okay, Mark Cleborn and his family used to finish on the 22nd. The night of the 22nd was my last day. Mm -hmm. My staff were in on the 23rd and the 24th for pickups and everything else that they needed to do. Um, and the key point is that um, I can guarantee you they all wanted to leave work at three o'clock on Christmas Eve and they knew they couldn't leave until the last client had picked up their yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So one of them would always volunteer, it would be a different one each year, to do the drop-offs. Yeah. And anybody who hasn't picked up by two o'clock, they were straight on the phone and go, right, we're going to deliver to you between seven and nine o'clock tonight. And one of them would volunteer so they could all finish. Yeah. You know, and it is about kind of adaptability and everything else. If, if you kind of become too stuck in your ways, you know, 2021 is a year to be more than ever before agile. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of bend like a reed, as my sensei uh, said and things, you know, that if you don't move with things, you break. Mm. And, and it's all about kind of learning. And, and that includes, you know, Wedding photographers, mate, my heart bleeds for them. But they've also been a lazy bunch at times where they can go, I'll just do one wedding a day, I'll have the week off, yep. I'll edit all week. And, and unfortunately, they didn't see, none of us saw this coming. No, and, no. And, and I tease about it, but my heart is absolutely broken for the wedding photographers for this year. But they have to be agile in 2021. Mm -hmm. If they keep to saying, I'm just a wedding photographer then basically they're not going to be a wedding photographer in 2022 because it's going to be so limited and injury. So yeah, yeah. Be, ad, uh, be agile, be adjust, uh, change as much as you can uh, and make sure you keep to your brand core. Fantastic. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. And again, if you've got any follow-up questions at all, just pop them on the VIP group and I'll forward them on to Mark if we can. And thanks again for tuning in. Cheers, Mark. Thank you. Pleasure. And I promise the next time we come here, yeah, yeah. my images will be on there. There you go. They'll all be on there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> they won't be as nice as these, but they'll be on the wall. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, guys. Merry Christmas to you.